Hello Snacks, welcome back, my name is Jack. Catapulting off the previous video stories of parents who did not seem to want their child to be happy, this is an oldie but a goodie of an update that began in just no mother-in-law. My mother just confirmed that she intentionally broke up me and my ex. My ex-boyfriend and I were together for just over three years. We broke up because our parents, my mother, his father, got engaged. They pulled a lot of stuff, but I'm going to try and condense it. So, they spent months referring to us as siblings and introducing us to people as our children and constantly joking about us as though we were full blood relatives when there's not even a distant relation. Then, when they got engaged, there came even more comments about how they were going to be a regular nuclear family with a married couple and their children and mom telling me I should think of my ex and his sister as my siblings. Now, a bit before the breakup, I had a pregnancy scare. I told my mom, who said it was good I wasn't pregnant because how will you explain to the grandbabies that you have the same parents? They got engaged and had an engagement party where my ex wasn't in attendance, but I was. At the party, my mother gave a speech and said, Thanks to our children, X and OP, for helping create this wonderful little family unit of ours, aside from your incest. I then had to deal with that for the rest of the party, and X and I wound up breaking up within a week, because now our entire extended family and family friends were joking about it. The wedding was on Valentine's Day. We hadn't spoken since the breakup, but X contacted me and asked how I wanted to handle it, and we agreed either we both go or neither of us go. We both flip-flopped back and forth on if we were going or not, but ultimately agreed to go because it would look worse if we didn't go at all and we were both asked to be in the wedding party. Well, it went about the same as any other wedding would go, right up until the DJ said that our parents wanted to dedicate a song to their children. And then he played Sweet Home Alabama. Cue laughter. Me and X left after that, but my mom followed. She said it was just a joke. We didn't need to get all huffy about it and begged us to come back inside. Well, we refused and stood outside while we waited for the next bus. Then we got to talking and long story short, we agreed to pick up where we left off as we'd been apart a few months, but all the feelings were still there. We'd not had any other relationships in this time and he even still had stuff at my place. We agreed that it was stupid of us to let other people dictate our relationship and also agreed to severely limit contact with our parents this time around. Full no contact, but very low contact. We've also booked some sessions with a couple's counselor starting Sunday. Today, my mom asked me to meet her for coffee, and I went, thinking that this would be a perfect time to tell her we're back together, talk about boundaries, and initiate the very, very low contact my boyfriend and I agreed on. However, I ran through the rain to get there and didn't think to touch up the concealer I'd put on the hickey my boyfriend left on my neck last night. Mum immediately sees it and asks where it's from. I was about two seconds away from faking an imaginary boyfriend scenario to her, but then she says, It's from your brother, isn't it? I then snap, He's not my brother! She now knows everything she needs to know and basically says that she's been married less than a week and I'm already trying to ruin it. Got a bit upset and responded that she essentially ruined my relationship of three years in favor of her relationship of less than 18 months and we've only just started rebuilding what they ruined. She then says, Clearly we didn't do a good enough job if you're already mending it. I directly asked if she was trying to break us up. She admitted that she and my new stepdad had entered into their relationship with the sole intention of ending ours because we said once, in passing, that we had been looking at houses a bit under an hour away so we could have a garden for future kids. And they didn't want to have to drive a two-hour round trip to see us. But then, when they realized they actually liked each other and wanted to get married, they then became even more committed to ending our relationship because they'd rather we were heartbroken than let their friends and family think that they were odd. So this whole thing started as a way to make sure we didn't move an hour away from them, and now it's them trying to make sure their friends and family don't think they're weird. So my mom left an hour ago, my boyfriend is at work right now, phone off, totally oblivious. 
I am still at the coffee place writing this in a state of shock. I mean, what do I do with this information? I know I need to tell my boyfriend when he gets off work, but how do we approach either parent going forward or begin to deal with this whole thing? Some of the best advice I can find in the comments, marry your grandpa, obviously. So on to the update. What happens now? My partner got home. I relayed the conversation to him. He admitted that he thought that exact thing for a while and had talked to his dad about it shortly before the wedding, but his dad denied it. And he didn't want to sound bitter or blame our breakup on other people when we only got back together less than 10 days ago. So we talked it out and we have a plan. One, sorting out something with my partner's sister so he can have a consistent, reliable mode of communication with her. Two, Full no contact with my mother and his father, starting the second we know the sister has a consistent method of communicating with us. And three, looking at houses several hours away from them, but still close enough that his sister can visit. Now, we do, however, have some issues and hesitations that we were hoping for advice on. His birth mother is a just no in her own right and is unlikely to help facilitate any sort of communication with the sister. His mum also happens to agree that our relationship is disgusting, although we're pretty sure this isn't because of the step-sibling thing. I'm Jewish and she's uh, not a fan. But that's a rant for another day. We're unsure how no contact would work. We don't have grounds for a restraining order and it's not possible to just disappear. And my mom has actually tracked me down before because I missed a couple of calls from her. Most of my family can take or leave, but there's a cousin and a great aunt I'd miss and I can't really stay in touch with them, but not mom. Same goes for my boyfriend and a couple of his relatives. Aside from that, thanks all for all the great advice on the first post I made. We went through it together and there was a lot of great advice, a lot of which we're putting into effect. Uh, also, shout out to the person who said to get a DNA test just in case. We have, and we are in the clear on that count. And to whoever said they'd read this before from a guy's perspective, I can't find your comment to say this directly, but turns out he made a couple of posts back in January on different subs on if he should go to the wedding. I would link them, but he can't even find them himself. So correct me if I'm wrong, but there doesn't seem to be any information on the exact age of this sister as to why she needs to find some alternative and secure method of communication with the brother. I mean, does not she not have her own phone? It's not that hard to, you know, privately keep in contact with a family relative on your own phone. Some suggest that if there is really no possibility to go no contact without losing the whole family, you can uh, organize controlled contact instead. Basically just giving really blunt Facebook update levels of communication. So that way they can still feel like they are in your life while actually not at all. And you know, if you actually have to be hanging out with them, go to places that I suppose distract them like a shiny little trinket. Like, oh, look, a museum. Oh, mini golf. Go play with that mother. Stop talking to me. <laughs> but what do you think about that? Because a lot of other people think just go no contact. Clearly, they have no interest in actually respecting you and your relationship. So why bother respecting theirs? Ah. Now, I must have missed it, but yes, apparently the sister is around 15 or 16, so it's not like she can independently leave and all that kind of independent adult stuff that we might assume otherwise. I mean, seriously, as a lot of people are saying, this could have been a heartwarming story. Wholesome. Oh, your kids met each other and then you met each other and now you got married just like your kids did. I mean, I feel like 90% of the incest comments and jokes were coming from the parents themselves, not everyone else. Onto more conflicts relating to family in-laws. Am I the a-hole for throwing my mother-in-law's cheating in my husband's face. This began 11 days ago and my God, is it rather contested. So I'm a 27 female. My husband, Liam, 25, have been married for two years now, but we've known each other since middle school. My sister, Nia, 31 female, recently separated from her husband because she was having an affair. I know that it's wrong and I've been open and honest about what happened with my husband. The thing is, She's going through a really rough time right now because her ex is turning their kids against her and she needs support. Well, last night, my husband and I had an argument about it and he said that I shouldn't associate with Nia and that it's my niece and nephew who really need my support. We argued about it and it got loud between us and I just pointed out that he's never cut his mum off and she cheated on his dad non-stop until the day he died. My husband got really quiet then. And it's not like we've stopped talking, but we have stopped talking about my sister. To note, my husband is Chinese and his father was from Hong Kong. His father was in his late 40s when he went to Vietnam and married his mother, Fan, who was barely 18. 
She was still 18 when Liam was born and they had immigrated. Now, I want to point out, you would not know that Fan is an immigrant. She spent years getting rid of her accent, she's got veneers, she got into engineering college and has a really high paying job. Except, as my husband told me, she constantly cheated on his father and she trained him since he was a little kid to not tell him. His father died thinking she was loyal and I, I get it from my husband's perspective, he never knew she was wrong to do that. But he did eventually learn and it's not like he's cut her out of his life. So I don't see why what I said was an a-hole move, but maybe I'm wrong. Now at the time, there was this interesting perspective of it all. Your husband probably relates to your niece and nephew, and that is why he wants the support to focus on them. I assume he may also be friends with the husband that was cheated on. You can continue to support your sister, but you can't blame your husband for wanting nothing to do with her. Others argue you're not the a-hole at all. Your husband just got quiet because you threw a truth bomb. You don't condone the cheating, but you support your sister, and I can respect that. Though others argue that that really is just hurting your significant other just to win a stupid argument over your adult sister being a terrible person. Like, congratulations, you won the a-hole Olympics. Gold medal in sucker punching. Which I can see where they're coming from with that argument, but at the same time, I think it's also a very valid truth bomb to point out. It's rather hypocritical of him to be so protective of his mother's actions, but then when it's not his own family member behaving like that way, then hmm, what's going on buddy? You're not sticking to your morals. But I think that his response towards the sister is exactly why we need to look further into this relationship he supposedly has that is so positive with his mother. As we find out from comments by the OP, he might not entirely be as uh, validating of his mother's behavior growing up as he implies. But first, let's consider the sister's actions here. And let me know if you think the sister was justified in cheating as such. So the OP explains that sister found that her affair partner was young, rich, and handsome. They slowly fell in love. They'd been hanging out as just friends for a while. Wherever she'd go, it was like he'd make an excuse to go be with her. I pointed it out to my husband and we were suspicious for a while and not really surprised when it all happened. So understandably, your sister is a terrible person. Yeah, wow, talk about selfishness. I understand it's your sister, OP, but man, I don't know why I expected something like her husband was lacking something. Like, not that excuse is cheating, but just that she got the hots for that guy? That's worse. I agree with the commenter. Focus on your nephew and niece and support them however you can. Let your sister find a way back to her kids if there's any. Now, in the sister's defense with her dilemma is that the brother-in-law has been telling the children horrible lies about how their mother doesn't love them, about how she's going to replace them with new kids and a new life, how her boyfriend just wants to take her away from them. He's done nothing but promote their misbehavior toward them and has said stuff like, boys will be boys, regarding my nephew and that my sister deserves to lose them. That he's going to do whatever it takes to get majority custody. Personally, despite the sister's genuinely scummy actions as to just chasing her, what, uh, horniness? Personally don't think the brother-in-law is in the right here and if anything is just making him equally as scummy just in a different, you know, flavor. Mm. This poop has corn in it, ooh. But it's still poop, you know? Okay, but back to Opie's husband. Here we learn a bit more information from Opie about his relationship with his mother and the concerning history of his childhood. My husband's relationship with his mother is complicated because he loves her dearly. He would never call her a bad parent and his therapist and I are the only ones he's ever talked about how she used to act. I honestly couldn't reconcile what he told me about his mother with the woman I know because after we got married, she gave me the biggest hug and said, I finally have a daughter. Yeah, that gets brought up later and not in a good light. But since he was a little kid, she'd expose him to her affairs and he's seen and heard far more than any child ever should have seen. Uh, no, she did not literally sleep with her partners right in front of his eyes, but she even told him once, never find a woman like me. It's to the point where I feel certain that it was abusive, but he refuses to accept that because he sees them as just affairs, even though he goes to therapy over how it messed him up. To him, his mother is the woman who always volunteered at his school, worked as the Judy mom at lunch, despite her actual job, would drive an hour to our university multiple times a week just to check on him or give him lunch or cook him dinner, who still calls him every night just to tell him she loves him. That's what he sees his mother as, even though he knows how wrong it was of her to do what she did. And yes, I've asked if his mum hurt him so much, why let him be close, and his answer is always the same, and it's just 
that she needs him. So essentially, this is Opie pointing out the irony of the husband being all, well, she's family. Despite her being disloyal and deceitful, chasing people because she was horny, she still deserves my support. Why can't we be like that? Which honestly, I think is a fair argument, but I'm open to your opinion on this. And it's in more comments by the Opie that we learn about the uh, guilt she, she seemed to have put on um, Opie's husband. So he saw more of his mother than he should have when she'd go to greet her lovers and was just told to sit on the couch and watch TV by her while it was going on. Beyond that, he might not have seen her sleeping with her lovers, but he heard it. There was also times when his mother would yell at his dad for not being man enough to give me a daughter. That made him feel unwanted. Now that said, his mother did smooth that over with him, going on to mention that despite arguably this mother-in-law being a terrible mother, husband still seems to treat her like an absolute gem, taking her to Seattle for a birthday, renting out a hall and throwing an amazing celebration. Clearly, he idolizes his mother. No doubt there's some pseudo-incestual stuff going on with that, I think. I mean, yeah, it's gross, but I kind of think it's more sad then gross, you know? It's that indirect form of abuse some children can be exposed to that screws them up as they get older. Which is why I theorize why husband is so adamant on focusing on the nephew and niece rather than the sister who cheated. He sees himself as the nephew and niece. He sees them as like a second chance to fix the screw-ups he experienced as a child himself. I think deep down, he knows that his mother was a terrible partner and a terrible person, and if it weren't for the fact that she was his mother, he would just kick her to the curb. Now, based on the concerning ages of the mother and the father of the husband, Opie does comment on this. His mother was not trafficked, and she herself would say that she wasn't. She has been in constant contact with her family since she left Vietnam and has been on vacations there with nobody but my husband since he was two years old. If she wanted to leave his father, then she could have. Do I agree with a man near 50 marrying a teenager? Hell no. My mother-in-law was not trafficked. She saw her husband as a ticket to a better life, and she took it. And that brings us to the update just a day later. Turns out my husband saw my post last night because he himself has talked a lot about his situation on Reddit since it's anonymous. It's me, his therapist, and online forums. It made him laugh because he wasn't sure if I was trying to attack his mother or defend her. Led to a talk about his mother and my sister and my niece and nephew and we came to the decision that we were too involved. I'll still be there for my sister and he'll still be there for his mother but we've decided to take a snap vacation to Mexico next week. Two weeks where we just get to be us with no other family members and celebrate Christmas alone. So while I disagree with a lot of things people said about me and my sister, I thank you because it made my husband laugh and now we're going to Mexico. So yeah, like the comments say, a lot of complexity with this story that makes it understandable and, and good that this man is going to therapy because holy covert incest and enmeshment, baby. That's a new word. I've never actually heard that word before. Enmeshment, a concept in psychology and psychotherapy introduced by Salvador Minuchin to describe families where personal boundaries are diffused, subsystems undifferentiated, and over concern for others leads to a loss of autonomous development. So basically, all the invasive, intrusive mother laws out there. So how do you think about this conclusion, though? Do you think it's the right path to take, just to take a step away from it all, kind of agree to disagree? Or do you think this is just giving the husband uh, permission to be hypocritical still? Or do you think that the husband situation and OP with their sister are completely different, and he is valid to make his argument that we shouldn't care about the sister, we should only care about the children? Let me know your thoughts, and for now, we'll go on to the next story. Am I the a-hole for fighting with my mother-in-law about not wanting kids at my wedding? I, 21 female, am getting married to James, 24 male, in January since the beginning of the planning process. James and I have both stated we do not want kids at the wedding. And this is where the problem starts, because my soon-to-be mother-in-law has a large family with a lot of kiddos under 10. They are her sisters and brothers, kids, so my fiance's cousins. Now, when we brought up the fact that uh, we're not wanting kids at the wedding, she flipped out on us, saying, why wouldn't we? Don't we want to be surrounded by family, etc.? and told all her sisters what we had said, which then turned into people harassing me and James into having kids there. Because, well, well, what's the purpose of the wedding if we don't want family there? Of course, this isn't the first incident of mum trying to control what we do. Either she wanted to make sure that people that neither I or James knows, just because they are old family friends, 
we were bullied into not having a destination wedding because not everyone can make it and it'll be our fault if they can't go. I have been trying to keep her out of the loop of planning for as long as possible because her attitude towards everything we choose to do. So I have people telling me I need to get over it and just deal with kids or whatever it is she wants because she is still the mother of my soon-to-be husband. I love that stupid logic. Her authority as a mother of the soon-to-be partner you have ended the moment your husband was 18. Hell, I'll even ease it off to 25 when the average brain has matured. I know I say it all the time, but okay, uh, mums, the point of raising children is so that they become independent adults. They can't be that if you you don't let them be independent. Don't get me wrong. As a family member, your opinion is valid in a situation, but it's not authority. Honestly, there have been many times when I have even thought about not having a wedding because she wants to treat it like a family reunion. So am I the a-hole for being upset that she's wanting to do whatever she wants? Now in that last paragraph, I can actually see what the mother-in-law is trying to encourage. I must be honest, it's more like enforce because it's true. Marriage is a union of families. It kind of makes sense that you should have family there for it. You don't need to, but it's, you know, again, kind of expect it. Like, wow, if you're so keen to be married into my family, why do you not want half the family to be able to make it? Are you really in it for the marriage or do you just want a lavish self-indulgent party? But what do you think? Do you think on the flip side, it is their wedding and as always, the people who are actually paying for it and getting married should get the final say in everything that goes on. Let's consider this you're the a-hole opinion. You are learning how large families work. You need to go with the actual circumstances of your situation, which includes a large family with many kids. Planning differently is only going to cause issues of your own doing. My sister had a destination wedding, but in the planning, it was taking into account who would need help affording the trip because she wasn't going to be an a-hole and obviously exclude my one aunt and two cousins that could not afford to go. Now, yeah, it's her wedding, but she wanted the people she loves to be there and was not going to embarrass anyone by leaving them out. You basically need to do the same unless you want to cut your fiancé off from his family. Now, you play the hand you were dealt with, which in this case includes a bunch of kids. Who knows? I'm not a modern white upper middle class American nuclear family type. But on the Natar side, you must have a wedding with no kids. Two reasons. First, it's the wedding you want. Second, if you cave at this point, mother-in-law will control your lives forever. She will name your kids. She will plan their birthdays. She will take them to their first Santa visit. She will plan your summer vacations from here on out. You and your husband must learn to say no. If you can't, your marriage will be intolerable and will end in divorce. And scavenging another comment by OP that might influence your thoughts regarding who's paying more for this wedding. Both our parents gave us money for the wedding, but not a significant amount. About 90% of it is still being covered by us. My parents haven't had any issues with that choice and neither has father-in-law. It's just the mother-in-law having an issue, which like, of course it is. So, two days later, how do things resolve? First, I'd like to thank everyone for their advice, although I would like to go back to the original idea of a destination wedding. We already have a couple of things that we would not be able to get a refund for or reschedule. As far as my mother-in-law goes, James and I talked about it and read a couple of comments together and realized he needed to put a stop to his mom. He called her and told her point blank, no matter what you want, we will not be having kids at the wedding. She obviously did not take well to it, but eventually calmed down and said, although she's not happy about it, she'll just deal with it. Hurts, doesn't it? Anyway, thanks again to everyone. Hope this is the update everyone wanted. Now, I don't know about you, but this is absolutely not going to be a conclusive story. Might be worth having a bouncer at the wedding, Sounds like there might accidentally be showing up some kids anyway. Again, I'm sure it will be completely by accident. Oh, she wasn't going to bring kids. Oh, but the babysitter was accidentally sucked into an alternate dimension on the way over and oh, there wasn't time to find another one. But yeah, if there's anything these stories have told us, it's that uh, being told no, a mother-in-law is absolutely going to challenge that at some point. Anyway, friends, we'll end today's video there. Thank you as always for watching. Hope you had a good time and uh, until until next time, see you later. Bye-bye.